the label recruited you to create a fake controversy about how you had a beat placement on the genre Sad Boy album, the Trippy Red and MGK album. Who approached you to get involved in this? Well, there's a lot going on with Kai. So, Kai, you have an album dropping with Dorian and June. Is that still still on schedule? Yeah, it's still on schedule right now. It's just like one feature left to clear, and then we're good. It's a big feature? I don't know if I would say it's a big feature right now. I'm trying to... Because I'm working on two albums right now, and the first album is like this Dorian album that's been done for a minute, and I kind of want to work within my smaller community on that one. Like more of a, okay, just because when you said clear, you got to clear it. I'm like, oh. I know, it's just like, they're just lagging on it. It's, it's cool. Oh, that could be a whole conversation in and of itself, waiting on features. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you got some pretty intense publicity off the, the MGK and Trippy Red controversy, we'll call it. Were you able to transmute that for more positive outcomes for your own music? Um. Yeah, so as soon as that started popping off, I know you you saw that you couldn't DM me. I turned off DMs instantly to just verify people because I know as soon as that tweet popped off, it was going to be like 20 million, like whatever, MGK, Trippy Red, Die Hard, just like attacking me and being like, yo, you need to die. So I was like, I'm, I'm not trying to see any of that. So it was just like the only DMs I got were like verified people being like, yo, I fuck with this or like some salty like producers being like bro what are you doing and then some like weird like cover artists like dming me like saying weird stuff but like for the most part the only dms i got were like cool and some producers have reached out like on instagram and twitter like defending me and like yo like we gotta we gotta tap in we gotta get some studio time in la and like work on stuff so that like that's coming soon so i do appreciate that and i try to make it positive by mo like hmm like moving forward, I wanted to talk more about music within my tweets and like making sure that I'm targeting the right audience because I don't want to just be like, oh, I'm the the roast guy right now. Like I'm the I'm going to be mad at everyone guy. And it's like that you can't have that continuously. Okay. Pang, you might want to just like briefly talk through yeah. what, what people know wh what you're talking about. Yeah, I guess in a nutshell, what happened was... um. At least from your side of things, the label recruited you to create a fake controversy about how you had a beat placement on the genre Sad Boy album, the Trippy Red and MGK album. And then the artists were, the plan was the artists were going to respond to your offensive tweet and it was all part of the rollout to get attention to the release, correct? Yeah. Okay. Which is wild. Um, this is damn near a movie plot. Who approached you to get involved in this? I don't really know if I can speak on that, about who reached out. It was more of like a creative team decision because like I know a lot of the producers here in LA. And so we're always like in the same, within the same camps, like doing stuff. So I don't know if I can like really say like, oh, this person reached out to me, but it was just like a crazy like butterfly effect moving forward into it and then it was just like oh and then at some point it wasn't really like a rollout anymore and i was like oh like i don't know what to do so what do you mean like what did it become like at some point it wasn't like it got bigger than it should have been because it did promote the album like a lot like i saw so many news articles talking about mgk like trippy red producer but it's like i barely saw before that people even talking about the album like it was making like no noise and then all of a sudden like it's all over twitter like i had high school friends co-workers talking like shit about me and i was like they don't even know me and then it's like that's crazy and a lot of these people like family members were like yo wait what and they're showing me this and i'm like that's me and it's like and but there was there was definitely a lot of buzz being created after that for the album so i guess in a way like it did promote sales and like audience like because it's like out of nowhere, Trippy Red followers are like, oh, we got to de uh, defend Trippy. Let's listen to the album right now. Or, oh, we got to defend MGK. Let's listen to it to prove this producer wrong. So, like, I guess it worked. Did it? And I just wanted to listen to it because, well, and actually, it, it got me listening to your own music, which was probably an unattended cons consequence, but a, a positive one for you. But, Dame, that was your question this whole time. Did it actually work? I guess it's I a bit debatable, yeah. I mean, to me, that's like a. I mean, I don't, I don't like stuff like this. I don't like creating fake stuff. Um, 
but um like i and I, it's really like a that's a random ass like because no disrespect but you don't have like the biggest platform yeah. do you like you know like to just start a controversy with an up-and-coming artist producer like to me that doesn't even sound like a good plan like like i just don't understand like that idea if we had 10 ideas on the table there's no way in hell I would pick that one to be like, oh, let's go with this because that's going to be amazing. Like, I, I could, if you want to come up with a fake idea, I got, I got, I could probably brainstorm a million more that I think would be way more effective than than this one. And I, I maybe it did work. Is there any proof that it did work? Is his is his album doing well? Like, I don't, I don't know. I'm not really tapped into Trippy Red his music. I think that's my, I think in my opinion, which is what I was saying last week, it does seem like effective marketing for their audience base. You know what I'm saying? It's like Trippy Red is the outsider, the outcast, the, the you know, kind of like the punk of the genre, the punk rock guy. And when I say punk rock, I don't want people to come for me for it's not his sound. It's just kind of like the archetype that he's taking. So for Kai to tweet, you know, I to me, I actually feel like it's creative coming from that camp. Um, and then especially like if you're saying it wasn't immediately Kai, I was just trying to read between the lines. I, I don't want to speak for you, but it wasn't immediately like go do this. It was kind of like a series of events that conspired to leading you to like making the tweet and that being part of the rollout. I think that I think it's effective because again, I would have never even known that Trippy Red and MGK were dropping an album together. That's not my demographic. It's not. It's not. I don't I don't listen to either of them. Uh, you know, I told y'all last week that I toured with MGK and he's it, like I just he's not my flavor as far as a person or somebody that I'm necessarily listening to. And this is zero disrespect. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying it's just it, it's not it wouldn't hit me. But I'm an avid Twitter viewer, <laughs> you know, and I'm on I'm in the tr Twitter streets. And so because of that and the effectiveness of the blowback of it. I think it was, it's not a route that I would take, but I'm also not marketing to their audience, you know? So I thought it was, it, it definitely got a lot more attention from people who wouldn't even have known that the album came out. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe it, maybe it did work. I mean, we're talking about it now, so. Well, yeah, Kai, I mean, you're actually involved in this. So based on everything you experienced, from your perspective, was it an effective strategy and was it a net positive? Uh, are we speaking for myself or like for the artists included the, in the conversation? Uh, I'd say both. I'd love your perspective on both. Okay. Um, so definitely like this is something that's been building up because in terms of Twitter algorithm, what it seems like Twitter likes to see is negativity, not really positivity. Like it loves to see you talk shit about someone. It doesn't love to see you like, Oh, this guy's so good. No, he'd love to see you say this guy's so bad. And this is following, like, I wouldn't say a fumble on Trippy Red's team, but there was that one song, I don't know if you guys heard, where he's like, I need an abortion. Yeah, yeah. And then everybody was, like, dogging on him previously, before I even dropped my tweet previously. It's just like, why is he dropping this music? We want old Trippy back. And so I can't speak too much about where his sound is going in the future. Hopefully, it's, like, going to the... I've heard that it's going back to, like, that old Trippy. But I definitely feel like it kind of brushed over after some time and it ended up being more of a positive in terms of like, we need to rope in all these fans and collect them and make sure that they're like die hard fans. I don't want no fake fans. Like I want the real trippy red fans to stand up right now. Cause I was having like a whole bunch of trippy red profile pictures just in my, like all up in my notifications. It's like, damn, that's like a fan base that you're building and they're willing to defend you. Cause like, I love some artists. I'm not going to defend them on Twitter. I'm not, I won't go to bat for them. Some MGK fans going to bat for them. So it's just like all these people coming in. And then it's not just that, but it's like a lot of haters want to listen to the album and prove to themselves that it's also bad. So it's like that stream is still going to count at the end of the day. I'm going to listen to that album. I don't like it, but I'm listening because I want to hear how ass it is. And it's like we're building that streaming going up and up. I'm not too sure about sales. I didn't really check in afterwards. But also, like, on the other side, it's, like, 
I kind of got to see some positive from it because it's like my fan base or not like my fan base, but my audience went from like 2000 followers on Twitter to like 7000. It's like I barely really do much to I barely have anything to show for it at the moment in time. But it's like I'm working on stuff this summer. Do you feel like do you feel like some of those followers are like just people that are just trippy red fans waiting for you to say something that so they can say something negative or they or did you uh, get some support through this as well? Uh, definitely like in the middle of it, I would say a lot of trippy red followers were following me just waiting for me to say something or slip up so they could be like, Oh, got you. Or like, Oh, like, ha. (laughs) But I feel like I haven't tweeted about that situation, like really at all, unless like someone drags me into it. And so those people have just been like trickling away and like unfollowing, which is cool. And a lot of people like before that, that tweet, like really got motion we're like following in support and being like, yo, like, I'm glad that like, there's producers like this, you know, like producers willing to take that chance. So it's definitely cool. I've seen a lot more positive feedback in terms of DMS on Instagram, because I haven't turned those off. So a lot of people are like in my DMS on Instagram, being like, yo, like, I rock with you or yo, like, whatever. I just wonder if you converted some diehard trippy red fans that were initially annoyed with you into actual fans of your music once they heard it. That's something like I have to like really see because I don't know if you saw that one tweet, but ironically enough, like my first upload on SoundCloud was a Trippy Red song Hmm. because it's like um, there was this Trippy Red, Uno the Activist, X song. And it also there was another version that released before that, before he got bid with uh, with 6ix9ine. And it's just like I didn't really like 6ix9ine ever. So I took him off the track and I put everybody else in and then I dropped that on SoundCloud and it kind of, it was like my first big mix, I guess. But then I privated it because I don't want people to see that. Um, which is pretty funny that it's like everything comes full circle. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I wonder if those Trippy Red fans even saw that tweet. It, yeah, it does. So as this is all brewing and they're planning this rollout, what made you say yes? Why, why do you think you were the one that they picked? And why, do you, why did you personally think it was the right move for you uh so i don't know if you guys like have seen this lore like background but it's like this also kind of happened last year but this wasn't like a planned thing with me and ugly god like i also got into it with him on twitter last year so it's like i was already kind of like in the small circle of like oh these people are like on twitter like and then they get like a good reaction from an audience because uh, I forget I forget what the instance was, but me and Ugly God were just going back and forth. And then we ended up being like cool after that. Like we're, we follow each other on Twitter. We talk sometimes. And it's like, because of that, I feel like it kind of sprouted into, okay, this guy's not afraid to say some crazy shit on Twitter. And it's like, people seem to love to react to him, even though he doesn't have like a huge audience. Cause you can hand it to like a meme account, but then it's like, it's going to get the meme accounts audience and it's not going to like, it'll, it'll, I feel like it would be a lot more negative if like I, I got like a hundred thousand follower person saying like, bro, this shit sucks. And then everybody's just dogging on it. They're not actually caring, but it's like, I'm from a musical background a bit. So it's like the music people are going to tap in and see like, Hmm, like, is he being for real right now? Like, is this for real? That, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Cause it, it was just, and I think it worked to the favor of the whole rollout. It was, there was a lot of suspicious stuff going on where I'm like, why did they choose Kai? Why not Cody? He does controversy and he has a big following. Or like, why are they now reneging on the whole whatever? And then you posted the document and I'm like, do labels really do that kind of thing? Do they issue those kinds of do- <clears throat> documents? But I don't know. It just gets, it, it gets deeper. Um, yeah, it, it uh, I don't know. How did you deal with all that in a healthy way? Because I know there was a lot of anger uh, coming yeah. at you. Definitely. I, at some points in time, like if the tweet got too big, I just mute it. Like I didn't really care for it. Um, and then there was like some talks with my manager just being like, yo, like, like I'm good. Right. Like I'm not I'm not doing too much. Like I'm not like she, she was just like making sure I was cool because like a lot of the things it's like. I can just mute it, but I'm still probably going to look at it anyways. So yeah. I just made sure like I'd only look at 
some of the top replies because the further you get down, the worse it gets. So it's like, I'm not really going to scroll down and look at all those <laughs> like replies because they're just saying like crazy stuff. And some of them even get filtered out by Twitter. So I try well, and then it was like, reply to those. Then, then it felt like things just kind of tapered off. And then there was a secondary press run where your name kept coming. I don't know if your name kept coming up, but the situation kept coming up. Yeah. There was that interview that they did. So that you know wasn't part of like anything like that wasn't like included in like a press run. I don't know why they asked that question. Cause like I watched the whole, that whole video. And Aaron like, has a theory. I'd love to hear that. Um, no one like specifically asked them to talk about the situation. I think the question was like your best comeback. And then he said that. And I'm like, how was that? Wasn't a comeback. Why did you even bring that up? But it's like, I'm with you. That's what I'm saying. Like everybody who's doubting you and saying like you made this whole thing up. I'm like, they needed to have a talking point. If this was not something that was brought on by a marketing team to rally, like, like you said, it's like they're finding their core fans. They're having the core audience react to this. So, and like you said, people rally around even like negativity. So I agree. It was such a like weak answer to the question, especially respectfully as like a grown man with multiple out, both of them with multiple albums out, living a, a life. I feel like coming like a comeback on Twitter would never be like in my top like boss moves. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. bro, what? <laughs> like. And that's what you're proud of right now? Like, dead ass. Like, that's crazy to me. Do you know what I'm saying? So it just, that and that to me was what confirmed. And then that's the clip that they keep sending out. It's like, there's a whole interview and that's the clip that's popping up on Twitter, Instagram. And I'm like, what? You know, so I, I'm like, to me, that's proof positive that this was a, this was what they were trying to create is a debate, conversation, whatever. Um, on your side, I just want to know, can you confirm or deny that you actually never had a record on on like you ne actually didn't have a track on this or did you get removed from the album? Like like my understanding is that you actually didn't have a, a track and it was just kind of part of the marketing. But I just if you can, could you clarify that? Yeah, definitely. So I, I don't know if I can speak too in depth about if I have a track or not. A track might exist, but the track was never on the album because like a lot of people pointed it out. There was 10 tracks. He removed me. There was still 10 tracks. So where was the 11th track? Like there, it didn't exist. Like there was possibly some record over here, but it's, it was never on the actual album. It got scrapped. So it's like, I don't know if people really did the context clues or like did the research to like figure out like, wait, where did the song go? Which is why... I don't know why they they brought it up to just like add more fire to this like can we live off this moment right now can we live off this moment right now because even in the interview trippy red's like he was on the album got him off but it's like no it was 10 and it's 10 still so i don't really i don't know i i think they're just relying on the audience not really paying attention and just like going with twitter and not actually looking into it themselves yeah i was asking questions on twitter so hypothetically speaking how would you respond to this tweet? Someone said, I wish I had it pulled up. Someone said, no, Kai didn't make the beat. Kai just provided the sample. Because, you know, I'm I'm a producer, so I was thinking, how could a producer not know that they were on an album? And then I'm thinking, wait a minute, there are a bunch of albums that I've been on that I didn't know about. And a lot of times it's because either, you know, someone will claim they made the beat or they'll just drop the beat first and deal with, the business later unfortunately that's how the business has been operating but in your case someone theorized that you had just created some kind of loop and then the beat got made it got placed on the album and you didn't know about it until the day before yeah so i think a lot of people in terms of like general audience forget that you know you see these names plastered on or you hear these tags like in this in the beat and you think oh this guy went crazy but it's like a lot of the time in these little like sessions that we have or like the camps that we have it's just like it's not one dude it isn't 
always like these three dudes. Sometimes there's like a whole team behind them doing something and then they just come in and get the label, like they get the credit taken out. And it's just like, we have a lot of ghost production going on. Um, so to go back to what you said though, a lot of the times it's like hard to like, oh, did I even like place this? Cause you get, you get a little melody, you get a little sample, you send it to someone and then this person might be playing it in the, in the session or they might be like sending it to someone else. And then all of a sudden it's like five, five people later, you're like, oh, this got placed. I didn't even know that. Damn, it's getting that that messy, huh? Yep. Is is this some what what would you is this something that you possibly would do again if a if a record label hits you and like, hey, we're gonna stir up some controversy? Um, you know, would are you down to be a part of it? How how are you looking at it differently, if if at all? Um, I think if I was to do that, I'd probably not do it anytime soon because it's just way too close to the last instance we had and people would just be like, Oh, is this dude again? What a familiar yeah. face. So it's just like, I can't be consistently pulled to the side and be brought like this. Definitely. There are some other strategies that I've been hearing within a little team about like other things rather than just like, I'm like dogging on someone on Twitter. Cause there's other things you can do with that same kind of mindset to just get it like onto someone's timeline. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of controversy, but I can see and kind of even respect somebody that just kind of like likes to rile up the weirdos. And if that's what you're doing, then like, you know, because people are, you've seen it, like people, the way people respond, you know, the people that just are so entrenched in their fandom that like they can't see anything else other than, um, you know, what what they're, what the person that they like is saying, like it, I, if, I, I I won't participate in stuff like that, but I can kind of respect that that people that people are just kind of like rile up the the, the weirdos. I, I can see it that they enjoy kind of like messing around like that. But see, that's Kai's tagline now. We still don't have a slogan, but Kai has riling up the weirdos. It's not fair. <laughs> but I still I still me personally I prefer to kind of stay away from from stuff like that and just keep it you know just keep it solid. Well, speaking of keeping it solid, where I know one of us has to leave. So, Kai, how do people find you? What's the best way to find you, your music, and follow you so that within some time, maybe a year from now, you go at another famous rapper? Uh, so they can definitely find me on, like, Instagram at Kaizan. That's K-A-I-X-A-N. And then Twitter is, like, the same thing, but with the 2K. And then Spotify and SoundCloud, same thing, just no 2K. Like, I think okay, K-A-I-X-A-N. Yeah. Yeah, and you got a lot of music out, and there's... Yeah. You, got, you got any new music dropping soon? Uh, Yeah, I got that album coming out with Dorian. Like, it's just produced by Dorian. Um, other producers, too, but like mainly he's like executive producing it. It's coming out like in June. I don't have a solid date yet because I still need that feature, but... Yeah, definitely. I think it's about like 10 tracks. Ironically enough, it's 10 tracks. <laughs> <laughs> Are you using two loss though? What do you mean? The, the, the dish, <laughs> you're not familiar with two loss, the distribution oh, company? No, I use distro kid. Okay. Yeah. I, I'll still listen to it. I'll still check it out. It's all good. I work. I work well, hey, but you're both, you're both in LA. All, all I'm saying is you're both in California. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So yeah. you can still convert people. Damn. Kai, I want to um, <clears throat> just give you your flowers while you're on here. I didn't, we didn't know what we were gonna get, but I feel like you feel like you seem like a very level-headed person, especially um, in the midst of like the blowback from this. And I feel like your perspective is uh, really refreshing and like genuine. You know, like you seem to have an understanding of like what pulls people in. You have an understanding of the industry, and yeah, I just want to uh, say kudos to you. Like definitely, like stay above the noise you know even like you having the foresight to be like let me just you know turn off my dms whatever like like don't get sucked into the negativity of all of this like you seem like you're on a really good track so you got support from me shout out to you for sure thank you i appreciate that i i think that's the best piece of advice you know because sometimes people hit me like when when negative things are happening is just kind of step away 
just step away, turn off your social media, you know, surround yourself with loved ones, you know, enjoy the actual world and, um, you know, you can get back to the madness Touch later. grass. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, for real. Yeah. And sign up to Two Loss for three free months of premium music distribution. I mean, Kai could even try it just, you know, for three months. You got an album coming out next month. Twoloss.com, use the code at odds. And you'll have your music on all the platforms. There's no obligation to join or pay or anything. Your music won't get taken off. Twoloss.com. The code is at odds. Kai, once again, we appreciate you coming on here. It was it was last minute, so we really thank you for that. And um yeah, I was I had a track on your album with Dorian. It was the eleventh beat, and yeah. I've been removed. So stay tuned. There will be a tweet. Well, don't be sorry. Just uh, just retweet me when I when I start roasting you on, on social media. Gotcha. All right. Once again, we'll be back at Odds Podcast. Maybe Dame will change the name. Who knows? Same time, same place next week. Potentially a different name. Appreciate you tuning in. Peace.